paradigm shift. An educational comedy. It's not a cause. Not a movement. It's not a social group you can slap a label on to. It's, it's an, an idea. idea. It's an intention. It's an intuition. A mindset in which reality can be explored. It's a genuine expression. A certain life. Critical thinking and imagination. To look inward upon ourselves. To better understand the external world around us. And yes, we egos are bound to be bruised. With our silly, strange, politically incorrect. Your style of going about things. Real, Real and raw honesty. Which invites you to be to the, the fullest. fullest. Kristen, Hello. Me and Rich. Oh, I was going to call you guys soon. Well, we beat you to it. So, ha ha. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm going to be honest. I've come to make a decision about something. Okay. How about you guys first going on with you guys? Um, well, Should I, I talk about much. I sent you one thing that, that has been going on, a, a little link that I think might amuse you. Mm-hmm. Fucking owned a little butter troll. So I, don't, I was going to look I at don't... that soon. I was going to look at that before I called you, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's been interesting, always... interesting and contrasty these last couple of days. So... Um, what is this thing that you're wanting to make a decision on? Oh, well, how are Rich doing? <laughs> oh, I'm doing good. good. Actually, let's, let's test the energetic waters here and see what the, what the energies will allow for as far as who can actually get on this frickin' conversation. Time to expand. Calling Daphne. I don't know how to talk to Daphne. Hey, hey, hey Daphne. Um, hey. You're, on, you're on the line with me and Kristen and Rich. Oh, hi. I was going to say, it sounds like a party. Hey, I've got a over, over here. Hello, Daphne. Stop. It's not as happy as this one sounded, though. Hey, guys. <laughs> Hello. We are all here. And yeah, last couple of days have been, have been quite contrasty, so this is like the contrast party one. Yeah, same. <laughs> I have cranky, super cranky kids. I'm dealing with a <laughs> cranky Ooh, no-napper. Mirror. He's just screaming and crying. Well, he's just, you know. Well, it's still here. He has not been met. Yep. Just like you have been allowing yourself to meet some of your own needs, so your inner child has been screaming, no, it's being, it's being reflected on the external. The literal child. <laughs> he's just, well, I don't know so much about that when it comes to just not, he's, he's lack of sleep. So he would be uh, screaming, crying no matter what, without sleep. Well, look at the look at the timing of it. Look at the alignment of it. What does what does that represent? Obviously, lack of sleep means he's not quite getting exactly that which he needs, and he's placing stress upon himself, which only exacerbates the problem. What have you been doing? <laughs> oh, all right. <laughs> Shut up. Yours being a troll. <laughs> yeah, you were. Is today troll day? It's troll day for the <laughs> oh yeah, Katarina's facing a lot of contrast, and it's her birthday. Yeah, she's just getting contrast reamed. 
I've been facing contrast with ease and flow, which contradicts my old paradigms that says, no, contrast has to be suffering and misery. It can't be ease and flow. <laughs> yeah, I've been doing a lot more ease and flow myself than just letting go. And of course, um, and I, I'm just I'm just going to to uh, to to put this out there to just kind of kind of move through it to put it on the table and uh, get it discussed and rectified. Um, well, one one thing that 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 Kristen's been dealing with, just generally speaking, is feeling like she doesn't know how to talk to new people that she doesn't know very well yet. So that's anybody, everybody. That's pretty much universal. So I think Kristen needs mm, some some, some, yeah. some some love and kindness from Daphne. Yeah, and you know what's funny, Kristen, is that I actually went through that myself a few weeks ago, reacclimating to, like, adult life, <laughs> as silly as that is. Uh, you know, not because most of my friends, you know, exited my life because, my vibration changed and we were all not in alignment anymore. And I actually gave this advice out to somebody last night. So, um, which I, uh, which is obviously a coincidence or not a coincidence, synchronicity. Um, but it was just about honoring yourself. Like forget about everybody else. It doesn't matter what everybody else thinks or does because they're going to think and do whatever they think and do regardless of what you think and do. No, that's so, not, a, that's just to correct that, that's not apathy and narcissism. That's not like me, me, me only. Fuck everybody. No, 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 no. It's, it's not about that. It's about honoring yourself because how do you feel when you want to talk to people but you don't? Yeah. I, I, I do want an answer that's not a rhetorical question. I hate that feeling. And oh. you have that feeling because you're not honoring yourself. And I'm learning that any icky feeling I have is because I'm not honoring what is in my highest and best and what it is that I really want to do. You know, like you really want to talk to these people, but then you allow your fear of the unknown, what they might say or what they might do in response to you. But ultimately, you know, they're either going to clear themselves from your reality or they're going to be in alignment and you just found yourself a new friend. Mm -hmm. And um, I really <clears throat> hesitated for the last, couple of years making any sort of deep friendship Dave can attest to that yep you know it's been um, I think I've I, been very hesitant. I, think I can I can attest to something that I think would be important to point out for Kristen's benefit um, yeah on on conversations you know exactly like this one it's not that Daphne lacks nervousness. It's not that she isn't terrified. It's not that all the stuff mm -hmm. isn't coming up. She's just deciding, okay, well, I'm just going to be confident and face this and, you know, come what may, so be it. So, you know, she, she is feeling the same way on this conversation and, 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 you know, many others and with you and with many other people, the same way, you know, you've been feeling, you know, with Brian and with Jackson and with Daphne and with Katerina and with many other people. It's just that Daphne's come to a point where she's like, fuck it, I'm just going to be me anyway and come what may. And she's allowing the quantum mirror to reflect that, ah, doing that actually isn't so bad. It's getting more positive receptivity than I thought. I mean, hell. Absolutely. And across Daphne, the board, too. If you want, if you want nervousness, Kristen, just, um, Daphne was, uh, Daphne getting to know me was and has been a very nervous prospect for her. I, kind, I'm, I'm like a, I'm just a major mirror for her. And, <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Like, a almost perfect mirror. I mean, and it, you know, there's only so long you can deal with the way that you've been doing things that it really is just a matter of giving in because you're exhausted continuing to do what you're doing. And that's the point that I reached, and I don't certainly don't want anybody else to reach that point. I obviously don't have any control over that, but, um, you know, it really was a, well, I just exa literally exhausted myself doing things the way that I, me, my ego wanted to do them because I – felt justified because my entire life I had spent doing for everybody else. So I was not aware that I was just slipping into a different frame of unconsciousness. I just went from one to another. And then um, and then I, re I read something about honoring myself and what that really means. And, um, and it really is the only thing that you can do. And I... Um, you know, in a conversation I had last night where I was giving the same advice, except for the friend that reached out to me was having an issue with a friend of hers who um, 
she said that there's a very one-sided relationship. She feels like she's giving, 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 and her friend's just taking, taking, taking. And, um, you know, and then she goes, but I'm just too nice to say anything to her. And I asked her, I said, well, are you too nice or are you just afraid what might happen? And she goes, well, maybe a little bit of both. And I, well, what's going to happen? You know, what's going to happen if you talk to those people? What's going to happen if you say what you really, like, would want to say to honor yourself? And I'm not saying, like, you know, if you're, like, pissed off somebody you want to scream and yell at them, well, that's not coming from a place of honoring yourself because that's not really what you would want to do with that person, you know. And um, it just it takes time. It's not something that's overnight as much as we all want this instant gratification, but it takes practice and knowing that it's going to work and it's just releasing how long it's going to take you to feel comfortable about it, you know, like you're just stuck because you want it all to be corrupted now. And you're just going to hold yourself back until you figure out that you just have to take a little step, you know? And, you know, let your freak flag fly. <laughs> you know, we all, and it, it's not a bad thing. You are who you are, and, you know, I built a lot of relationships based off of um, acquiescing and compromising and what I thought was going with the flow, but what I was really doing was ignoring myself and what I really wanted to do and I ended up with a bunch of friends who I had a lot of fun with but all we did was party and there really wasn't anything deeper and one of my so-called best friends we got really intoxicated one night and she was talking about marrying her boyfriend and I flat out told her that I didn't support it because I just brought everything to life for her I'm like you constantly cheat on him and not only are you constantly cheating on him but you're cheating on him with your ex-boyfriend and would you tell me you want to marry this guy? Like, that's, I mean... That just I have means- a question for everybody. Um, yeah. Would it be cool, um, do, do do I have everybody's um, permission to take this call and turn it into PSEC 2015, honoring yourself? Would that sure. be okay? Sure. Okay. Uh, I just, I so, don't do I don't do things like that without permission, because I'm not a dick, so, yeah. Just absolutely, thank you, I appreciate it. Yep. Um, so we had this, like, heart-to-heart, and I basically just told her how I felt and how I thought she was making a huge mistake, and, um, you know, and that really she, you know, he's not the right person for her, that she he doesn't bring out the best in her, you know, and all of these things that she would really want your friend to tell you, and um, she basically told me to, to shut the fuck up, and she didn't care what I had to say, and I hurt her feelings, and never to share how I feel about her and her relationships again, and ultimately... Um, uh, let's see. So fast forward. So that happened in early 2013. Richard will be right back. He's going to mute the line oh, okay. and, and he's got a vacuum right quick. So just like okay. he's taking um, leave. So fast forward about a year and it starts happening. Um, you know, he she, uh, she goes with him and picks out her own ring and basically forces him to buy a ring that he doesn't want to buy. Um, he won't give it to her. Uh, until, I don't even know, he wouldn't give it to her. And then they found out she was pregnant. And then they ended up getting, um, planning a wedding and all of this. And she asked me to be her matron of honor. And early, um, um, was it earlier this year? I don't know. It doesn't really matter. But she asked me to be her matron of honor. And the next thing I know, I get a wedding invitation in the mail. And the wedding is in two months. I don't have a dress or anything. She moved the date up by six months and didn't say a word to me. I've been asking her to help her with stuff, and she tells me she doesn't need any help. And then I get the invitation. I'm like, what's going on? And she's like, oh, well, you didn't really seem that interested, and you didn't want to help, so it's too late to be in the wedding party. And I'm like, <laughs> and I stood up for myself, and I honored myself in the moment, and I said, you know, Bree, I'm really sorry that our friendship is not strong enough for you to come to me when you are feeling like I'm, that I've done something wrong in our friendship, but that I'm not, you know, being a good friend. Like, I really thought our relationship was a lot stronger than that, but it obviously isn't, and I see how our friendship is valued. So, you know, I won't be at the wedding. I wish you all the best of luck, and I'm going to leave things amicable, and that's all I did. And she texted me probably, like, two months after that because I had uh, an article of clothing of hers, so I ended up giving it to a mutual friend of ours, and, you know, and that's been it. And she is still, you know, married. She had that baby. She's not working. Her, you know, they're doing the exact same thing. I mean, I really don't even know because I don't keep up with her anymore. 
you know, but this was a, supposed to be a person that was there for me no matter what. But when I was really there for her and, like, and maybe my words weren't the right, but she chose to just, you know, not have a friendship with me. And, you know, that bothered me for a really long time. And I thought, well, you know, what's wrong with me? Was I not interested? Well, you know what? Honestly, I probably wasn't as interested as I could have been. But any time that she reached out to me, I was engaged and giving my honest opinion and all of that. And, you know, the last thing I had heard about was dresses, you know, that we were going to go look at dresses. And then I never heard anything at all. And, you know, there were certainly things I wish that maybe I had done a little bit differently and maybe I had um, – but it is what it is, and I came from the best place that I thought in the moment, and I have to be okay with that and allow her to honor herself, even if it's not what I want, you know? And uh, it's okay, because it cleared the room for people who really do love and support me, and I'm not chasing a friendship that doesn't mean something to the other person, and uh, and it's okay, you know, I'm not, like, bawling my eyes out because I'm not best friends with the same, with the girl I was best friends with in third grade, you know, but I still have her on Facebook and we talk occasionally, you know, and it's, it's just a matter of perspective, like, especially you being under the rule of adults and having big people around, there's this, um, you know, they like to take away your power, but they can't. Like, even if you have to sit in a room and you're without the internet and without TV and, you know... They give you nothing but books. You still have an option to, you know, like honor yourself in that without getting upset about it and understand that, you know, your parents are just being what, however they are and in the moment and it has nothing to do with you at all. They could have had a bad day at work. They could have been, you know, gotten in a fight with your other parent and you don't know about it. You know, they could have gotten, you know, cut off on the way home, who knows, but it has nothing to do with you, and that is so key. In honoring yourself, you realize that nothing has anything to do with anybody else because you realize that the place that you're coming from has nothing to do with anybody else. Yeah, that's a process. I'm totally getting lots and lots of reflections that are themed on that. I'm even getting notes dropped in on deviant art that are themed on that and oh all sorts of it's it's like it's like september is like honor yourself month or some shit i mean it's like, <laughs> you know wow um quantum mirror just going nuts <laughs> right right and you know it's i actually just got off the phone with my life coach um about an hour ago and we were talking about uh, about this, and, you know, every time that I have honored myself uh, in the last week is when I've really been picking up on it, and, um, you know, even to the point where I'm, I'm honoring however it is that I'm feeling, too, not just the good stuff, but um, allowing the bad stuff, and um, it, it feels good, because then it's like, well, I don't have to justify myself to anybody else at all. I can just, and Dave, you said this to me the other day, just doing it because I want to do it, and there is no other reason. Like, I don't need any other reason. I don't have to justify it to anybody else, and they don't have to understand. And that was a huge thing for me is because I want everybody to understand what I'm doing so that they don't think that I'm this malicious person. But I spent all my time, like, essentially justifying myself, even though I took it as, like, I'm just explaining myself. Well, no, I'm not. I'm justifying what I'm doing so that they're okay with it so that I can continue to move forward without a problem from them. And that is so much more work than just going, I'm just going to do it because it feels good and I want to and I'm honoring myself. It's so much simpler. Yep. And, you know, everything really is simple. We just overcomplicate it all. We give ourselves all of these things and it's, uh, you know, it doesn't begin our uh, conscious acceptance of it. It's just what everybody else does around us. So when we change up the story and we're doing something different, we look like the oddball, you know? Like, have you seen the movie Inception, Kristen? No. That may or may not... Have you seen it? That I have. That may or may not be one of the ones I put on your hard drive. You might have to check. Okay. Well, that one is 
amazing, especially if you view it from the point of it being about life. And um, and what what they in a part of it, it's in the beginning, and this isn't going to ruin the movie at all. But um, the mo- it's about they create are literally creating dream worlds to uh, bring conscious their consciousnesses into in order to access information in people's subconscious mind that they may be hiding. They're, they extract information that way. So they create these worlds, and let's say it's my dream, and this world is created. Well, if you come into my dream and you start doing weird things, all of the people in my dream are going to look at you, and you're going to stand out. Well, that happens in real life. So when you're doing something, and you're doing something, you're doing something, and all of a sudden you decide to do something different, everybody looks at you, and everybody takes notice because – you have created a new, you know, a new wave, and it's not what they're used to seeing. And some people accept it, and some people will fight back. So, um, and it's not that they're fighting back because they're against you. They're only fighting back because you're changing the story, and they don't know what to do. And it's not your job. It's not your responsibility to. Tell them what they need to do in response to whatever it is that you've done. Your only job is to do to honor yourself and continue to honor yourself no matter what anybody else's responses are or how they make you, uh, uh, nope, because they can't make you feel anything. And to um, honor everybody else's right to do the same. That way you're not really going to take anything personally. You're just going to see the quantum mirror reflection, so to speak, and you're not going to be like, how dare they have a negative view well, of me? Exactly. How it's dare like they? If you're, like, well, wait a minute. Right. How dare me for saying how dare them? <laughs> you know what I mean? Exactly. They it's like if I have a chocolate ice cream cone and you have a vanilla and you tell me I don't like chocolate and then I start bagging on your vanilla, well, that's totally unnecessary. It's like, oh, okay, well, you just must prefer vanilla, yeah? Oh, okay. You know, it's just as simple. You're just changing the subject matter that's in there, but we, we decide as humans that an event or a situation is, has more value than some other situation when in reality – it doesn't. This is what it is. It's only a big situation because we make it that way. And the argument against that, and I can hear it coming from whoever is going to listen slash watch to this, is that, well, if you don't, then you're just acquiescing and you're not standing up. Well, we're not trying to fight against anything. We're learning to honor ourselves and honor others where they are. And it's not turning a blind eye to anything. It's just like Dave, I love this, that's stepping off the hamster wheel. Sir, I missed like the last three words. Oh, I said stepping off the hamster wheel. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah, and that's really all it is. And they, I, you know, and it's so, it's taken, you've been saying that to me for a long time. It's taken a while for it to truly think, like, really, you know, take the roots. But, um, and person to, you know, with your age, you're dealing with a lot more than just your own consciousness. You've got a lot of things going on within your physical body right now. You're getting a lot of influx of things that um, cause more impulse decisions. So that's why it's really important for you to uh, put good things into your subconscious that when you do make those impulse decisions that you aren't scared of what is going to result because you know that that they're coming from a good place. Does that make sense? Reprogramming those neural networks, uh, de- deconstructing the societal neural networks and constructing some that are a bit more functional and, and not self-destructive so that when that reflex and impulse does kick in, then your your reflex is going to be more towards um, honoring you know, your, your pace and your right to be you, and it's not going to be more towards being self-destructive or doing things that are going to get you into deep shit. Absolutely, absolutely, and um, people you know, th- people think that teenagers um, are a bit self-destructive because oh, it's teen angst and that's just how teenagers are. No, no, it's because that's how society has taught them to freaking be, and they've got all these neural networks that have been put there by the mainstream media, by school, by parents, by this, by that, that when, when reflex and impulse kicks in, it defaults back to those neural networks, and those are the ones that are there. Those are the ones that have been programmed there. That does, it has nothing to do with, oh, well, teenagers just do that. No, it's because the adults put all kinds of bullshit in their heads, so that's what they act on. <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely, and um, you know, 
I love yeah, it how the grown-ups play like kids. Like, oh, yeah. oh, this world is so bad because, you know, kids these days, they're just, oh, I can't believe this. It's like, wait a minute. Um, are babies, like, born into this world with a full hard drive? All the stuff that you don't like that they're doing, who put that there, huh? Gee, right? talk about psychologically right? projecting and shit. What the fuck? Oh, um, yeah. Katarina's calling me on the other line, so I'm going to mute out for a moment. Oh, okay. Well, then I will hang on here for a moment. And, Kristen, it's important for you to know that you will probably be alone in this as far as your friends go, and that's okay. Mm -hmm. You know, like, okay. So, uh, and the thing is, like, I I go into these social situations, and I, I really do enjoy the people I hang out with, and the reason I know that they aren't receptive to the things that I want to talk about, and I can – make small talk conversation and basically all my in-person friendships has just been like superficial because I mentioned I'm spiritual I mentioned very um just basically about metaphysics and what I think and how it affects me but I am not able to really fully open up to anyone but really Dave and Rich because I can tell my some of my friends think it's stupid some of them just don't understand it and I don't have that many friends in person to begin with, so I just feel, and so I just, I used to be very talkative, and that, as I've started to change, I am very uncomfortable with the fact that I've gotten more quiet, and I've, it, I like to be cracking jokes and making everyone laugh and saying interesting things, and I'm currently at a spot where I don't have very many friends to do that with. Okay. Well, there's a couple of different things that rose up here while you were while you were saying that. And the first thing is is that um, you are a catalyst, and that's why you're alone uh, in your physical world right now. Is because you are the starting point. You're the beginning ripple, and that's okay. Now, understanding that you are the catalyst, and that you have more knowledge than everybody around you physically, um, you know, you've got to accept it and be okay with it. And then just be yourself. Like, really just honor yourself fully and don't don't hold back. Like, as hard as that may be, and you're going to have to do it in a little burst to say things here and there. Because you know what? Like, you being funny has nothing to do with your spirituality. It has nothing to do with metaphysics or any of that other stuff. That's part of who you are. It has nothing to do with what you believe. So you can still be that funny person and you can still make those jokes and you can still do that stuff. And what, what will happen is that you will, the more that you are yourself, the people around you will also be more of themselves. And if they are, won't, if they refuse to, well, then they will exit your reality and somebody who is will then come in. And, you, um, you know, part of honoring yourself is honoring the ebb and flow of life and understanding that you are going to have lulls like this, you know, and that you are going to have influxes. And all of that is part of the process because if you surrounded yourself, all of these people who just happen to be around you, that you happen to go to class with or whatever, you know, and you aren't feeling good around them, you know, they aren't giving to you, you are actually doing not only yourself, but you're doing them a disservice too by hanging around when you're not in alignment. So if that's where you need to start to help you honor yourself is to start by honoring others first um, that um, you know, and taking actions that, you know, honor them, to honor you too, eventually you can make that switch because mm, I, I feel like you have a hard time switching gears. Like it's hard for you to like slam on the brakes and go in reverse or go right really quick. Like you like that smooth transition. You like to know what's coming. Um, you know, you understand you're going to have to move a little bit, but you want the, um, you just want to see it all so that you are entering dangerous waters. Is that, am I on? Is that right? Yes. Okay. Yes. So, um, the thing is, is that you don't have to see what's 50 yards ahead of you because it's not here now. You'll see that when it comes close enough for you to do something about it. That is how the universe works. 
So if you're ready for your opportunity, the universe will give it to you, and then you can act, you know. But you're be like right now, what you're doing is you are taking your logical mind and looking 50 yards out in front of you and then trying to dictate your actions now, but then you're running into the trees that are right in front of you because you're failing to see what's right here, right now. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Okay, so when you direct, um, when you address what's going on now and you make that move and you just move around this tree that's right here in front of you, now as you're nearing that 50 yards and it becomes a lot closer. You realize the action you took 40 yards ago was the exact perfect action to set you up for what's coming up now right the way. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So you're unknowingly setting yourself up for success just by honoring yourself right here, right now. And it really is that simple. Well, well. I mean, I know you're right, and I know, like, to me, it doesn't, even if it means, you know, I have more, quote-unquote, friends by stifling the really going on inside of me and not actually being open. It's not real friendship. It's nothing. It's not, I mean, obviously, there's varying levels of friendship and everything, and so it's okay. You're allowed to have friends that aren't necessarily super close to friends. But I know in some cases I have kept probably myself from making connections because I just withheld so much about myself in so many situations. Because I don't, a lot of the things I like to talk about are really kind of serious. And, you know, when you're out in social settings, not everyone wants to hear about necessarily what's wrong with the world or super heavy topics and that's just where my mind goes a lot and that's what's made that's why I just for a lot of the time I just don't bother making plans with people or when I do go out it's like I can tell you know people aren't super responsive and should I care is it you know a bad thing they can be themselves they cannot respond to I just Naturally, I really want to be liked by other people, and I know that's not just me. It's, it's, it's a lot of people experience it. I'd say most people do. Yeah, um, for sure. That's basically what I've been at, and I've been making new friends, and I noticed that I've a lot of the people that I'm friends with seem to be at the same level, um, knowing as far as the world that I was three or four years ago, and it's an interesting reflection for me because it's like they know that something is wrong with the world. They know that corruption exists, but they don't understand exactly how it works. And so when I get into these conversations, I would say I do know more about what's going on, but every time I try and talk about it, I know that I just sound like an insane conspiracy theorist because to them... Right. Yeah. Yeah. So that's kind of where I've been at. And actually, I have one friend in my mind where we started talking about the state of the world, and he is set on the fact that he thinks the world is going to end in destruction, probably nuclear war. And I think that we are actually on the track to healing the world, but I have no idea where to begin to even start to tell him about that and because it's such it's such a drastic difference and I know that probably the biggest reason I haven't been able to figure it out is because you know I'm thinking I'm overcomplicating like you were saying before about how I'm going to phrase it and if it's going to be good enough as opposed to just saying how I feel and right. you know you can take it or leave well and to something that I have found because um you know, I work very closely with my intuition and my spirit guides and knowing um, and learning the signals because there are signals constantly and we just have to pay attention to them. And I have found when I get into those moments where I am, uh, and it happens a lot with my husband, he has very different, he's a self-professed atheist, and which is really funny because mm-hmm. here he's 
he's seen my mediumship in action, you know, but he still does not believe, you know. And that, how can I explain that to him? He's seen the proof. He's watched me make people, I don't, I don't want to say make, because it, it has absolutely nothing to do with me. I'm just, I'm the channel. That's it. I'm the instrument, mm-hmm. um, you know, but I'm channeling this divine, you know, I'm channeling spirit and to their loved ones. And the people here in the physical are bawling their eyes out when I'm speaking, you know, and mm-hmm. he sees messages directly, but he still won't admit that he believes, or maybe he doesn't, I don't know. But when I start to talk to him about these things, if it starts to feel like that, where it's like where I don't really know what or how to say it, then that tells me that the conversation is done and it's time to move on. As much as I might want to continue it, it is not appropriate for me to do so because all I will do is cause more confusion. And that's part of knowing is uh, being aware of that. And when you force in that situation, then you start to uh, not honor yourself because then it starts to get icky. So. Um, like everything that you say, and this is something that, you know, you'll you'll come to see if it hasn't already happened to you, is that years down the road, people will come back to you and say, hey, you said this to me, and now it makes sense. You know, I'm telling Dave that stuff. Your stuff you told me last year is just now making sense, you know, and uh, or I'm really getting it. And that's okay. So um, it's okay to, you know, have conversations with people and they don't understand. And it's okay for the conversation to end before you feel like, You've given all the information that you wanted to give. It's all that they can take, and there isn't anything more that you can do about it. And I would really encourage you to, um, in your mind, to set, uh, to make particular times appropriate to talk about the things you want to, and the times, uh, and then set out times that aren't appropriate. So you know that there's a particular group of people you hang out with where they have absolutely nothing, they want nothing to do with any of this stuff, or then that's not the appropriate time. So instead of being like, oh man, I can't relate to anybody on this stuff. I really want to talk about this, but nobody understands. It's just that's the time to play with them and to have the fun and make the jokes and say the stuff. And then you have your time later in the day where you talk to Dave or you talk to Rich, you know, or if you want to talk to me, you you know, and that is your time to have that. So you look forward to it just like your school schedule. You know, there's classes you really hate and there's classes you really look forward to. But when you're in math class, you're not trying to do science, you know. Doing that. So it's just that same sort of approach. And that is just for your own sanity and for your own heart because this stuff is super important and you are going to want to talk about it to everybody and their mother. But that's just not realistic. So if you said you're having unrealistic expectations about how you can express yourself and in turn that is not honoring yourself, which is why you're feeling so icky about it across the board because you haven't given yourself that time to just and let it all go, you know? So Yeah, kind of, and that's why I, but for the most part, I, I've i given up. I mean, I will say over the summer, I ended up meeting this group of people, and they're all really cool, and I haven't really talked to them about anything metaphysics at all. We've kind of gotten into political discussions, and I've been open about the fact that I think the whole system is just set up to not be dysfunctional and everything. And so I have been in some pieces, but the biggest thing is a lot of the time, I, you know, when we'll get going in group discussions or whatever, like I can, I make jokes and I, and I can banter with them and stuff and it's great. But then there's other times when I just don't know what to say because everything I want to say is either I just so don't know how to... they're going to take it. Or... So why can't you just enjoy your moment, just being present and enjoying the fact that everybody around you is having a good time? You don't always have to contribute to the conversation, you know, and not contributing to the conversation doesn't mean anything other than you're just enjoying yourself where you are, you know, like maybe that's something you need to visit and see if you feel obligated to constantly contribute to feel part of the group, because you should feel part of the group whether or not you're saying anything. Oh, true. That's probably the biggest issue or whatever you want to call it. I mean, yeah. And, you know, and the hugest thing that I will tell you, and it starts 
when you're younger, if nobody teaches you what a relationship should be, whether it's a friendship or a, um, you know, or an intimate relationship, if you don't understand what it is that you need to do, then you don't have a proper structure anyway. So it sounds like you don't know what your place is in the group, but you haven't talked to anybody about that, and nobody's going to talk to each other about it because you don't know, none of you know that you need to do that just to see where everybody's at. And you don't have to do it like a big group powwow and sit down and say, where do we stand with each other? It's something that you do, you know, individually with each person. And when you know where you stand with each person and what your relationship is with each of those people, then it's much easier to feel comfortable in the group because you've already cleared that all up. You understand that, you know, you just, yeah, just understand. Yeah. <laughs> Boys, stop. Let's see what I really do see what you're saying, and that being part of me would be amazed. And that what? Um, that's another thing. With since I, I've just met like this group of people and made friends with them. It's kind of like I'm not, and it's completely this. It's completely societal. It's like for me doesn't know, like, I know we're, I'd say we're fairly close, and part of me has, like, judgments about how much I should share, depending on what level of friendship it is, so, since we're not super close, it's like, I don't know how much of myself to share, and I'm not you even know just about, like, the metaphysical stuff, just everything in general. So it's like, it's the awkward, should we be closer than we are? How do I get to know people for who they are? Well, your and mind is doing all the work in that, so. <laughs> and that's what? It's, um, I, honestly, I'm overthinking it because there can be ease and flow in getting to know people. I've experienced it myself, and there's no reason why I shouldn't be able to with any person, even if it's, we get along or not. And Absolutely. You're absolutely right. And it's, um, and this time, too, like, and I don't know if anybody has, like, outright told you this, but now is your time to make mistakes. Now is your time to learn all of the stuff, to, you know, uh, Find out which rules can be bent and which ones will break and, you know, like, this is your time to figure out exactly how it is you want to live your life. You're putting, it's so much easier for you at your age to change something than it is for any of us at our age to change something, you know, until you get in the habit of being able to change things quickly. But that's our natural state, is being able to adjust really quickly. So everything you're experiencing is 100% completely normal, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with you. You need to make mistakes. In, in fact, make a few on purpose, and they might turn out to be happy surprises. You know? Like, you never know. Like, this is this is like a safe point in your life where you really don't have anything to lose. You know, even if those people decide to not be your friends, well, what the fuck ever? There's 7 billion other people in the world. Somebody's going to want to be your friend, Okay. <laughs> And not just somebody, mm-hmm. but lots of people. It means I'll be alone for a little while. Yeah. You know, and it's, um, you know, we just get in the car, please. Um, you know, and it's just about finding that childlike innocence again for life where we just do things for the sheer enjoyment of them, regardless of when they're going to, uh, of how they're going to turn out. I mean, my four-year-old is a prime example of that. I mean, that kid gets in trouble so much. They have a lot of fun. <laughs> you know, and he doesn't care. Like, he'll break the same rule if, you know, 500 times if what it results in is fun for him. And he doesn't care that he gets in trouble, and he doesn't care that I get mad. He doesn't care if I yell. He's honoring himself, and, you know, he's teaching me to do that, you know, for myself and for everybody else, too, and teaching me how to, uh, can you see, please? Um, you know, and teaching me how to honor myself and come from, you know, that place when I do have to address something because, you know, sometimes honoring yourself is 
confronting somebody. And that's okay. There's nothing wrong with confrontation. You know, it's necessary. Yep. You know? And um hold on just a second. Sorry, trying to get the kids in the car seat. Um, but I've noticed a huge change with my kids too in just the uh you know, they're they're honoring their places a lot more. Um, you know, and they will if they're mad and they can't like calm down and they're kinda of starting to lose their shit, then they will literally go into their room and <laughs> Um, and do that, you know, they'll go in their room and, and lose their shit for a while, and then they'll come back out when they're ready, you know, to um, contribute to the, you know, high vibration that I do my, my best to keep in the house, you know, and, um, you know, it's taken a lot more work on my part, but, uh, you know, you just, you're the most important person in your life, period, hands down. It'll never be your children. It'll never be your significant other. It'll never be your parents. It'll never be your friends. It's you. And when you make yourself the most important person, and not in a selfish, arrogant way at all, but just by honoring yourself, wherever you are. I'm back. Uh, sorry, I'm back, and I'm about to merge Katerina in to join us. Yay! All right. And, um, you know, when you come from that high riding place, you know, you'll find that even the people who were most resistant to your change to begin with will just go like, well, whatever, and then move on, you know. They, there won't be any confrontation because you didn't allow it to begin or you just didn't participate. And then eventually they stop doing all of those things, too. Hey. Hey, Kater, Happy, birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Thank Katerina. you. It's the birthday Thank girl. You, Hi. It's the birthday girl. Yay. So what have you uh, done today? Uh I went to a nude beach. <laughs> you went to a nude beach? I, I went to a nude beach and I went swimming in my birthday suit. It was fun. Yay. Awesome. Swimming in your birthday suit on your birthday. Right. So I'm in my birthday suit on my birthday, and then I went out and had lunch with my sister and her boyfriend, and we just had a Where's fun Paul? day. Paul is going to be home in like, I don't know, 10, I mean, an hour maybe. Oh, okay. He's out working today. Katarina's just making Richard really want to go to Austin now. <laughs> um, <indeed. Right>? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. No, the only other people around were like old men in their little beach chairs. Um, yeah, I don't know. That was fun. That, 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 that reminds me of that one, one picture. Remember, remember, Rich, I was telling you the one, the, the one, the one old guy laying out in the beach chair and then, uh. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's what all the younger beaches at Florida are for. If you're wanting to go that route, yeah. I'd rather, I'd rather be yeah. in Florida, honestly. I was gonna be doing that because at least there's a lot of pretty a lot of pretty women around instead of a lot of crusty old dudes with hairy chests that just make your eyes want to melt. Yeah, they only really have the crusty hairy old dude chest beaches around here. Sorry. Yeah. So the trip. So the trick. Probably, I'd, I'd probably be hanging out in Houston anyway. That's where I'd want to be. <laughs> So, so the trick is showing up at the crusty old nude beach that that Katarina is also at, so she can take your mind off of the crusty old guys. Yeah. <laughs> like I said, if I'm going, to, if I'm going to Texas, I'm going to Houston. Sorry. Oh come on! If if Katarina was running down the beach, bouncing her 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 gems like Pamela Anderson on Baywatch, I don't think you'd be paying attention to the crusty old dudes. Oh, Lord. And also, not that far from Houston. So, you don't really have any excuses. Oh, God, that's funny. So, Daphne. So, Katarina. So, guess what? What? Well, my friend Mary Adams and I, I haven't even told Dave this yet, but my friend Mary Adams and I got some invitations to go teach some classes out in the Phoenix and Sedona area, like, Beginning of next year. Woohoo! Guess oh. who I would come see? Hell yeah! You 
totally come stay at my house. <clears throat> I, I, well, I would come give you a hug. I would come love you. Hell yeah. Mm-hmm. Then we could have a Google Hangout where we see Katarina and Daphne in person together with Mary Adams. <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. That would be fun. Oh, it'd be so much fun. Yeah, you have to let me know um, when you get specific dates uh, and all of that. We can make arrangements and... Uh, Looks like you, you guys know. got a place to crash. <laughs> oh, my God. Wow. Holy shit. What? Um, okay. So I got... A message the other day that I will be traveling in the early part of the year next year, like the first within the first three months of the year. And Sedona mm-hmm. is technically traveling. Mm-hmm. And it said that I she told me that I was going to take like a little trip. It wasn't a vacation, but that it would be you know, but that it would be you know a few days away from home. So I wonder. Mm-hmm. Ooh, are, yeah, you'll have to definitely give me the info on that. Okay. So, because I would like <laughs> I might participate too. Heck yeah. So and, uh, I would also love to help promote you out here. I know lots of people who would love to come to that. So sounds good. It'd be awesome. Sounds good. Yeah, if, like there's so many possibilities happening here. Like, because Mary has a lot of networks out there with, like, spiritual centers and, you know, just a lot of people who are in that, in those circles. So they've just been like, when do you want to come? Like, we are ready to come. How do you come do that right now? Blah, 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 blah. So, but Mary and awesome. I, like, we want to get some stuff ready. And, you know, we, we have our classes going on now here. And we just did our first one on Saturday, and now we're going to do another one in October. And then we're doing them once a month. And then I'm probably going to be doing some classes in between then, just around the area, just on my own. And it'll be really exciting. And by the time we get to Arizona, we'll be all ready. Hey, Katerina, you know what would be fun? What, Dave? Next time you're here in Chicago having a Google Hangout in the woods. And if there, Ooh, and, and if the, and, and yeah, and if there isn't a, um, if there isn't a local uh, Wi-Fi hotspot, which in those woods, last I checked in 2010, there actually I was actually able to get Wi-Fi out there. But if there isn't, I can just always activate Cricket for a month, and I do have that little Cricket Wi-Fi portable Wi-Fi router thing. <laughs> Are we gonna go out there and like meditate and feel our chi? We can go out there and do whatever you want. Go meditate and, and feel our kundalini rising through the <laughs> earth and out through our legs and down the earth through our roots and up to the sky and do all these like crazy meditations. As like my kundalini penis rises as it extends now. But anyway, I, I, just, <laughs> I think I just I think that I think that the the woods might be a nice change up of scenery than like you know the back wall of my room. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's all I'm thinking. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. Totally. Totally, totally, totally. So where's Kristen? She's here. I'm here. There she is. Hi. Hello, Katarina. Happy birthday. Thank you for telling me happy birthday. It's been kind of like a not happy birthday today. (laughs) So this is like the first, like, happy part. Besides me, she's coming. (laughs) The old, the, the old woman, the old woman's 23. Yeah, what? Oh, that's a bitch. Crap. Hey, hey, Katarina, did you get my, my, my little happy birthday video that I posted to your wall? Uh, I've got so many things on my wall right now. Like, I just have been clicking like, but I haven't actually uh, looked at anything. Except Katar- for Daphne's little Kat- meme. Kat- I was really going to say, hey, Katar- Katarina. I made that especially for you. Katarina. Oh, yes, Redridge. I sent you because that one day I was having, I was kind of being Mr. I was going through all that shit. I'm not going to say there's any reason as to why right now, because I don't uh-huh. think it's necessary at this point in time. But um, did you get that link I sent that YouTube video of that dictator guy, and then like you know, he like drinks the sprite or whatever, and then he's like all of a sudden like happy or whatever, and he's like dancing around. Was that something you sent <laughs> me on Skype? Yeah. Oh yeah, I remember I was gonna watch it and then I got distracted. It was it was a, it was a, it was a sprite commercial, but I thought it fit myself because I was feeling kind of down and out that day because my energy level was like in the toilet because you know 
I was doing all that right. for contrast, and I was thinking to myself, oh, this one, this is like perfect for this whole thing. It's like basically it's a sprite feel the freshness, but I was thinking, oh, instead of sprite, you could just put Katarina's name in there and say Katarina feel the freshness. <laughs> and he's going, can yeah, you feel part. it? <laughs> That's funny. Com- com- comes in, it comes in uh, two one-liter bottles with uh, nipple head instead of twist-off cap. <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> Although you, can you can't see-, see it right now, but I'm shaking my head. <laughs> you can you can twist that you can twist the nipples, but but you can't twist them off. Well, that's yeah, about it, that. It, it's not a cap. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you, had take a good, you had to take a good bubbly, ice-cold, refreshing soda and turn it into bubbly... Everything warm. can be turned into a body part, can't it? Yeah. Dave is an <laughs> expert. Dave seems to be an expert at this. Just for the, ta- just for the taste of it, Katarina. Oh. Boy. <laughs> <laughs> you mean inanimate objects, human qualities? You just took a Dr. Pepper somewhere? commercial and fucked it up. It's not Dr. Pepper. It's just, I remember there are uh, just for Pepper. the just for the taste of it, Diet Coke. That's what I was. I've saying. heard for Dr. Pepper old Dr. Pepper commercials that are just like that. So, well, I, I think they you know by Coke. Well, they I've are. Heard kind Dr. Of, I've heard Dr. Pepper by the same so, company. I, I've heard Dr. Pepper do the same type. Of well, Dark Pepper is technically owned by 7-Up now, which is technically a separate company, but I don't know if they're under the Coca-Cola umbrella tree. I think Dr. Pepper is Dr. Pepper 7-Up Incorporated. They're their own chain, and then Pepsi, and then Coke. Well, That's at some level right. up, they're all owned by the same corporation anyway. <laughs> right? Right. Yeah. Because yeah. I've learned through Dr. Pepper commercials, it sounded just like that, for the taste of it type thing, similarly along those lines. Uh-huh. But yeah. Ka- but Katarina beverages are owned by Paul Roy Incorporated. <laughs> no, they're not. Owned by Katarina. <laughs> yeah. That's <laughs> right. Katarina, That's right, right though. <laughs> <laughs> Paul has them on lease, and he pays for them every single month. <laughs> yes, that is true. <laughs> they're leased. They are leased. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know what's going next, on with Kristen. Next topic. The I heard she was talking to Daphne, and then, like, I got on the phone, and then the ogre, was quiet. Next topic, the ogres of Pussy Mountain. Just kidding. No, go ahead, Kristen. What's been up with you? Oh. Um. I've been going to school. <laughs> no, Kyrie, when you got um, to And then... Oh. <laughs> Uh, I've um, been doing some marching band, and I <laughs> yeah, I love marching band. I still glide step sometimes. And then <laughs> <laughs> I love that voice. Oh. And then 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 Dude, my life is fairly uneventful. That's that's and then so then I come you home and get on the internet. What's wrong yeah. with your head? The more eventful stuff you've been having lately. The more the more eventful stuff is rated P for privacy and is none of anyone's business. Yep. Right. Oh, oh Mo- no. Movie not yet rated. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Well, see, and I took that as, like, you have internal stuff going on in your mind that you aren't sharing. All the activities going on in without. And then there the boys have to go again doing the boy stuff. <laughs> you know, you gotta, come on, the four-year-old. A void dance. <laughs> we dance around the void. <laughs> I must have been dealing with such a long well, if you don't want to talk about fun stuff, I can talk about fun stuff if you want. My my yucky stuff. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. Well, I would love to hear. Yes, let, yes, uh, Katarina, show Kristen that you're not this this uber goddess ascended master that's perfect and and so far above Kristen. Show her that you're human too. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, fuck that shit. Fuck that shit. So my sister today, she's been traveling and visiting and being here with me and stuff, but it's been bringing up a whole sort of family funness. But the today, the, the best part of the entire trip was that her suit, her dog, is like in the middle of having all these issues, and he has a like pancreatitis, and so she ended up having like a sobbing breakdown fit on my birthday, like while we were hanging out, out having a celebration, and then I have to like come and cater to her and her emotional needs, and I love doing that for people at the same time. It's like the one day of the year that I want to be off duty, if that makes sense, and not like support everyone emotionally. <laughs> like, I just yeah. wanted to be selfish for once and just be able to, like, you know, have my fun and my, my celebration. And I was really pissed about it. And I was really, really sad. And that was part of my, my not-so-fun day today. So I'm really yeah. happy that you and everyone on the phone. Yeah. And, and, and your sister has no clue that she should be thankful that I wasn't physically there. <laughs> Why is that? You know the sorts of things I would say, <laughs> and she'd want to kill me. <laughs> Why did you lay down the truth, paradigm shift, smack down? Yeah, um, just, you know, just being my honest self, kind of like what used to annoy you about me, and occasionally still does. But she's mm-hmm. she's not used to that, so I think she'd, like, reach for the nearest frying pan and try to hit me with it. <laughs> You know, that's one of the things that I'm realizing, too, about all this paradigm shifting stuff is, like, the quantum here takes no coffee breaks, right? So, like, all of this stuff, even though my desire would be that it would just be a fun day all day long, there'd be unicorn kittens and, like, candy and balloons. Can I interrupt and balloons. Second, Katarina, on that? Uh, well, yeah, what's up? Just, okay, what you start out is saying about how you love to support people in those ways. And you wanted your day to be full of fun and the things that you like to do. Uh huh. Um, the thing. I know, I know. That's so, true. I do, I do love supporting people. Tech, so you got technically what you asked for because you love to do it. You know. Mm-hmm. The universe is trying to make you happy, that's all. You got what you asked for, viewed it as ne- viewed it as negative, and went. Yeah. <laughs> right. Continue. I just wanted to. Yeah. At the same time, though, I would have really, really loved to have that to be tomorrow, and I could not have to. Do it. Cause I love doing it. But I didn't want to love doing it today. Yeah. It was really, really hard because. Yeah. Just like how you saw that your your sister was causing herself her own stress, now it's being reflected that, oh, look, you're also causing yourself your own stress. Mirror, mirror, the universe okay. is trolling you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm being trolled. I'm being trolled. You know, Paul also has me to come home for the day, so you know you have even more stuff to look forward to, and you all just grab out of the way. Right? That's true. I, that is your true. Your one person is you know, he's got something worked up to do. He loves you. So much. That's like, true. You're already important for it. So, and you've got that contrast. So now, because you started your day off not ideally, that you can appreciate it even more so. Whatever it is he does for you, even if it's just sitting tightly by your side and allowing you to enjoy your birthday celebration without any drama. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know? You know, today, today of all days, um, Susan Worster posted like the most appropriate, funny, freaking picture to my profile. It says, um, it's a, it's a like a universe, um, you know, pyramid thing to where it's like got a got a little space scene in the middle of a glowing. Oh pyramid. yeah. At the bottom, it says shift happens, but the F is in F is in parentheses, so it's read as shit happens. It says you two can climb. Then above that, it says, asleep. I don't want to know anything about this shit. Above that, it says, curious. What is this shit? Above that, it Uh says, waking up. I have a lot of shit. Above that, (laughs) it says, awake. I'm seeing my own shit. Above that, it says, enlightened. Helping others deal with their shit. And at the top of the pyramid, it says, ascended master. Holy shit, it's all perfect. 
So of all mm-hmm. the days that she could share a picture, she shared that on this day. Universe trolling again. Yeah. Yeah. I'm used to the universe trolling. It happens a lot. Yeah. Meanwhile, sure meanwhile, and a good thing that did happen was that there was a photographer at the restaurant that I was at, and I've been, like, wanting to manifest some new pictures for my website. And she was going around taking pictures of people at their tables, and because this is kind of a touristy place. And she was like, hey, uh, do you want to shake it? I'm like, no, not right now, though. Put your card so I could actually, like, be able to, you know, have a, a studio shoot with you. And I was like, how did you charge? And she was like, well, I just, I just charged like 30 bucks. And I'm like, what? That's ridiculous. Cheap. Okay. Let's do it. And so I got her phone number, and I'm going to go in about them. So I can have awesome. some photos from my website. So that was really cool. Great. Yeah. Meanwhile, in the uh, bat, in the Batcave, as JP plays, <laughs> well, going, Richard, <laughs> Richard, your impression suck dick. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Well, you fucking people don't own guns. You get raped by the government, so there. It's illegal to be it's illegal to be homeless where you are. So there. Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) We have freedom to tinker here in the United States. You people have the freedom to suffer. (laughs) We're British. We pride ourselves on our suffering. (laughs) Obviously, you can see that very well. Your pompous attitude shows it so well. Love and light until my butt is hurt, then fuck you. Then fuck you. You don't have Rochelle. enough. You don't have and enough. A, you don't a, have a, enough content. And, 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 and if Rochelle was online, he'd be like, "Oh, and then the whiny one who doesn't seem to know when to shut up." Ah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Even though I think she's so adorable, but I just can't say it because I'm so butt hurt by her cuteness. Mm. <laughs> I feel a homosexual twinge coming on. Hans, fuck me in the ass, please. <laughs> My big wide anus is feeling very itchy and butt hurt. We've got this guy with actually excellent voice impressions that I can't even do because I have a gay little soundboard. Hans, rape me. I need to feel love. Hans, just grab onto my beard. I don't have handlebars. Mm, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Me from Switzerland, me terminate asshole. Ah! <laughs> okay. Arnold Schwarzenegger in Machine Gun Dick. You it, ain't seen him coming. He'll be in your back side. I'll be back. Side. On your ass. <laughs> I'll be back side. I was on California's back side. <laughs> They went bankrupt. You know, I don't think I've ever had a conversation with just my girlfriend where it starts to go into all sort of, like, sex-related <laughs> funny stuff. I don't think that's ever happened in the history of just women. Execute order <laughs> 69. I want to fuck. <laughs> Unless you're very white. Oh. I haven't had a conversation Oh, with yeah, her. of course. Women never, ever get sexual when they talk in private. No, they're, they're oh, just... Oh, no, never. They're just, they're just little, little perfect nuns that just sit... <laughs> sit in prayer circles and go, isn't it so wonderful to be female? And no, they don't talk about anything. Well, it's just, it's it's more like <laughs> straightforward and to the point. You know, like, mm-hmm. we we don't turn genitals into live objects of some sort. It's just like, was it big? Yeah, was it good? Oh, yeah. You know. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, females don't ever partake in any sexual humor. Nah, they would, oh, it's just they would never do that. Oh no! Never, oh, ever, oh, ever. This goes on. This goes on a perfect topic. Uh, one of my high school friends, um, which I'll leave her name out of it, but we were having a conversation the other night, and, and you know, there was this other friend, friend of mine, you know, so-called friend, apparently not so-called girlfriend of mine, you know, uh, who was a buddy of mine's ex-girlfriend. Um, but I thought this was funny because apparently she thought I was creepy. This was before the other girl that I'm really good friends with got to really know me. This was a couple of years ago, but um, 
basically she called the other girl called me creepy because apparently I looked, you know, I looked at her bosoms or whatever and she thought that was creepy, but I was sitting there laughing my ass off because I'm thinking to myself, okay, so number one, I probably haven't ever been the first. I'm not going to ever be the last, but apparently me admiring a woman for her physical beauty is a crime against humanity and you should have your eyeballs gouged out with a crowbar if you do, because if you look at a woman any Why? other way, you're 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 a criminal and and you're you're a pervert and a rapist and 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 an anti-misogynist and you're this crazy weirdo and you know I mean I'm just sitting here like you know oh it's worse yeah than, it's worse than that if you don't admire her breasts then oh well you know you're not acknowledging her beauty and you're just being a meanie face either that or you're a homosexual but then if you do oh, look right. it's like oh you're a creepy scumbag how dare you well only because you're not the guy she wants to look at that that's all. <laughs> so anybody who's exactly. not who she wants to look at her is not automatically a creep, you know? And anybody who she wants to look, but they aren't looking, well, they, they, they're not acknowledging my beauty. They're, they're a hater. They're, they or fuck I them, or they're not, gay, yeah. Or, yeah. or I must be inadequate. Or whatever, you know. It's like damned if you do, damned if you don't. When girls see assholes as being the only real reality, then they can't see all the nice guys around them. Oh, wait, believing that's, is seeing. That's, that, that's the interesting thing. I mean, Steve, my buddy Steve, who she dated, nice guy all the way around, good guy. He joined the army. He's in the airborne right now. I'm super uber proud of him. He's, you know, he's a, he's an outstanding individual. You know, he's doing his duty for his country. He's, you know, he's protect he's protecting our country. You know, he's at least a decent military man, not, you know, like a lot of these crazy industrialists now, among our general. Now, if only Obama would just let him bomb ISIS. Damn. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. But, um, anyway. Essentially what happened is she broke up with him because he was changed. That was her words for it. Changed. The army changed him, and he became rude, and, you know, blah, 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 blah. Well, the army certainly did change him. I will vouch for that, but that doesn't mean he's rude. Well, yeah. No, the army, that, that's like the understatement of the year. It's like, yeah, the military does change you. He's probably he's, just more confident. Brain, he's, he's, more, he's, more, he's more confident. He's a man. He's you gotten know, more used to speaking his mind. It's probably yeah, he's, what's he's more used to, her. Well, yeah, absolutely. And my husband is retired military. He's been 10 years in there. He's the most forward, delight and frank person I know. Yeah. And I thought the same thing, but it just comes to find out, well, you know what, when you're in the military, you have to talk like that because you don't have time to put these Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. No, he, he, he is probably... somebody's life on the line, literally. Yeah. No, and every day for him, even when they're on training missions, every day for him could be the last, you know. Um, on one of the training stories he did, they did a parachute jump in a thunderstorm because the general was having a hard on and wanted to get some troops on the ground right now because he was impatient, stomping his feet, temper tantruming like a little bitch. But um, they lost two guys in that thunderstorm. Oh. He, he, landed, he landed in his buddy's blood. That's how bad that thunderstorm oh. was. He landed in oh. his buddy's blood. He was dead. He was oh. dead. He was gone. Dead. Oh. Not there anymore. And, you know, hearing that from him, I could, you know, I'd look in it, you look in the guy's eyes, you know he's telling the truth. That shit changes you, whether it's training or whether it's actual combat. Oh, yeah. That, that, oh, sort, that sort of oh, general, yeah. that sort of general should be shot for treason. Oh, absolutely. No, I would, 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 I would do, I would do that general, but, you know, if anybody's watched Braveheart, when William Wallace got his local landlord, kick him down the hill and then put his and slicing his neck of a bullet with a knife. That's pretty yeah. much what those guys yeah. need. Well, the reason my uh, my husband is retired from the Army is because of a mistake like that by a superior who did not allow them to use any uh, loom, any light, and they ended up crashing. Mm -hmm. I, uh, they, they crashed a million dollar, $2 million tank and totaled it. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and everything. So that's, unfortunately, it's a very common thing that happens in the military because all these guys get power hungry for that stuff. And my friend, you know, lost a friend in the military too and he wasn't even there. And it messed him up. So I can only imagine what this poor guy is experiencing landing in his front. Yeah, I think it I think it would only be be fair to send that general up in a in a thunderstorm and and you know push him out with a with a parachute but make sure that when he pulls the cord pots and pans fly out like one of those Looney Tunes cartoons. <laughs> well, I mean, 
Steve amazingly is actually picking, you know, very well. I mean, he, he's doing it a lot better than, you know, I know 90% of people out there would or even more than that. You know, he's got, he's very mentally sound to be able to just be able to talk about it in a calm, you know, matter of fact manner as like it happened, you know. We need we need more good generals like Patton was, and not these power hungry pussies. Well, they're out there. It's just that the military, for years, has been under an agenda to route those guys out, push them out, roust them out. They don't want those kind of people. They don't want Douglas MacArthur's. They don't want General George S. Patton's. They don't want guys who have been in the rank and file and know what's going on out there. They don't want those kind of guys. They want power hungry scumbags. They, they don't want. They don't, yeah, they don't want bull. They don't want Admiral Bull Halsey's or Chester Nimitz or any of those types of people. They don't want those kind of guys because those kind of guys are humans first, and they know what it. It means to be out there on the front lines. They know what their men are going through. They know what their men are thinking, and they're smart. And they won't commit genocide. And they will not Um, commit genocide. Technically, guys, um, the generals and all of those things, they start out as officers, as lieutenants. They have a four-year degree, and they come in, and they are actually enlisted, most of them. So that's not uh, 100% across the board. A lot of them get indoctrinated. Well, yeah, not 100%. But, but it, I'm just saying in the in the current administration, generals tend to be appointed if, right. they, if they kiss Obama's ass enough. Or Bush well, right. or whatever psychopath is currently in charge. Well, right. But no to get to that general ranking, he had to start out as an officer, not an yep. enlisted man who goes into you know, the, the E ranking. They actually start out in charge of everybody, including the E7s, E8s that have been in the military for 20 years, you got some new, they call them butter bars. Yeah. You know, a second mm-hmm. lieutenant who comes in who has never done anything. He just got out of college. You know, he spent four years in college, and hopefully he's gone to West Point, which he may or may not have gone to. And with all that means, he's just indoctrinated even more so yeah. to do whatever it is that the government wants him to do. So they but go unfortunately. This, but they never really get to experience the true enlisted man <clears throat> yeah. journey. It's a completely different <clears throat> Unless they've, you know, went enlisted and got a degree, and then they, you know, then their enlistment ended, and then they re-enlisted as an officer. But otherwise, you know, it's very uh, not common for them to have actually gone through that experience of, you know. Unfortunately, even. Unfortunately, even with the en- enlisted ones, you know, they, they, they only they only raise the guys up through the ranks that are bloodlusting psychopaths and the good people. They push back because that's just the way the administrations have been for the last 20 plus years, dare I say. Well, absolutely. And having, um, you know, been on all sides, I actually have a friend who's a drill sergeant right now. And it's such a it's a, such an unconscious process and it happens like the indoctrination of the military instills all of that. So everybody who's actually doing all of that work doesn't even know that they're doing it. And um, it's the most horrible thing. I've seen so many servicemen get out, and they're well, literally just destroyed mentally. Well, what, and well, what, what it is, what it is, is it's total compartmentalization of the military. I mean, it's, you know, they, that's the way they, they break everything down is through compartmentalization. I mean, you see it in the legal system. You see it in, you know, um, the medical system, you see it everywhere. It's especially compartment. especially with cops. Somebody, nobody is, yeah, yeah, police department, everything. Yeah. You don't see any communication. You don't see it. It's all just little tiny sex. It's all broken up and it's the control micromanaged that way. Now, I, I will say out of experience, out of, you know, knowledge and, you know, things, stuff through documentaries and things, the nature of the military, most of the military does just the way Daphne, but the Marines on hand. Hey guys, what's um, up? What's up, Katarina? I need to make a phone call, so I need to let you guys go. All right. Um, if you want to return to this call, then just message me on on Facebook uh, when you're done, and I'll bring you back in. Okay. Oh, that's Th- fine. Thanks for showing hey, up, uh, though. Hope you had fun. Yeah, and you know, I'm gonna take this opportunity to go too. I just got my little something from school, so I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna dip out while it's a good time. All righty. All right. Well, thank so, you guys. Okay. Th- thank you guys for showing up, and happy birthday, Katarina, and cheer up. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, love you. All right, love you all. Love you guys. Bye bye. Bye. Bye bye. Yeah. But anyway, as I was saying, um, Daphne was correct on that, um, and the fact that that's really how they do it now, especially in the uh, the, the only real experienced pilots, I was, or officers, will say that they're really churning out anymore are pilots. Those are really the guys that. 
yeah. because they go through training and they go through all they go through survival and all that stuff. I mean, they train those guys to front lines just like infantry. So the pilots kind of know what's up. They know what's going on. Mm-hmm. Um, I was, I was just going to say that with cops, um, unfortunately, the way the police academy is now, if you get too high a mark, you fail. If you get too low a mark, you fail. Because, you know, most people think 80% of cops are bad. No, 80% of cops aren't bad. They're incompetent. The system is designed so that they accept mostly people who are just smart enough to take orders and do their job and, and dumb enough to not question them. And, you know, they, they, they treat being a cop like it's a video game or something. But anyway, um, going to the Marines, Marines, on the other hand, have a system that I think the entire military all across the board ought to go with. Before you become an officer, you have to go through infantry training. You have to learn how to set up trenches. You have to learn how to set up ambushes. You have to learn how to do everything that a clerk would do. And that's pilots, that's desk clerks, that's... Everybody in the Marines, they have to learn how to be first and foremost on their ready riflemen. They have to know how to, you know, lay line. They know how. They have to know how to do all of all of the things that an inf- uh, basically trained infantryman can do. They have to learn. They have to be a grunt. They have to learn how to do everything. You know, sand and mud. You know, boots soaked and cold and uncomfortable and haven't eaten in three days. They have to go through all the training that the infantry go through. Before they get to go on to their advanced officer training, they just get whisked in. Oh, here you go. You know, here's your, you know, here's your officer's <clears throat> pins, and here's your nice, clean little squeaky uniform. You know, and they have to literally do everything that an infantryman would have to do before they're allowed to even go out into the field and start commanding Marines. And under that system, I think it would really knock out a lot of that chaff, if you will. It would get rid of anybody who just wanted to be there because they wanted the position for power. Because they wouldn't be willing to do what it takes to actually be there because they want to be there. And they want to help people. And they want to lead Marines. And they want to be yeah. in our nation's best. Hey, Rich, you and Kristen talk for a few minutes. I will be right back. Okay. So what are you up to, Kristen? Are you here? Kristen, hello. It's showing her it's connected on the line. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll be right. um, okay. Oh, sorry, sorry. I totally muted it and I forgot to unmute. Okay, that was stupid. Anyways. That's all right. What I to do is convince my mother to stop my Culver's and get me some pumpkin salted caramel ice cream. Oh, God, that sounds so good. Oh, it is so fucking good. Like, I used to work there, and Jesus Christ, I started working there right as soon as it came out. Mm-hmm. Oh, it was, my God. You know what? Yeah, I'm about to call my mom right now. So she's coming home from work. So okay. then I'll call back, okay? Okay. <laughs> Priorities. Okay. <laughs> Talk to you later. Yep. Okay, well, I'm back. I just need to grab something to eat. <laughs> yeah, uh, Kristen said she would. We're going to have to call Kristen back, so she said she'd call us back, but I know how that's going to go. She, you're going to end up having to call her because yeah, exactly. you get on the call. But anyway, um, yeah, she's going to talk to her mom about something really quick, call her and tell her about something. And so, yeah, she said she'd call back. All right, that's no problem. I'm just typing her telling her I'll merge her back when she's done. Definitely an interesting call. Kind of an on-the-fly PSEC episode. Sure. But he consented for it to be that. Mm-hmm. And yes, I also made it known to Katarina before joining her, because she had called and I was talking to her just off to the, on, to, on the sidelines about things, and Invited her on and told her, you know, just so you know, everybody consented for this to be public, so don't say anything you don't want the world to know. (laughs) Notice it's been getting easier and easier to get more and more people on lately. 
Mm-hmm. We're just kind of starting to move in that direction, and that's really cool. Mm-hmm. I mean, hell, the one we did with Vinny, we had like five people in total. Mm-hmm. How long was Kristen gone before I came back? Gone for at least somewhere around there. I don't know. I was not keeping track. I'm just making a guess. Um, I was just curious as to how many minutes of silence I'm going to end up cutting out of this. <laughs> just uh, where uh, I got done talking about the marine thing before you just left. Yep. Yeah, I'm glad I, did. I I didn't know that that was going to be a second, so it's, uh, I'm kind of glad I didn't any detail anything. Well, I got your consent at the same time as I got everybody else's. I heard you say, yeah. I mean, I'm not going to include any of our conversation that is, you know, prior to... Uh, to calling Kristen and Daphne and such. Okay. So, you know, nothing prior to that. And, of course, while they were on, and you hadn't really said much yet, and I just asked if it's okay with everybody if uh, we could make this a public uh, PSEC episode, and you all said yes, and I heard you say yes as well. Everybody consented, so I'm like, okay, cool. I did step away for five minutes. I don't know if I caught you saying that or anything. Um, that was prior to your exit. Well, actually, I was gone for like two minutes before that, and then I just came back to let you know that I was about to vacuum. So, I don't know. I'm pretty confident that I heard you say it's fine by me or something to that effect. I didn't say anything like that. Well, it's... I have to pull personal anyway. No big deal. Yeah, because I did let everybody know. <clears throat> I didn't know you were gone. If you were gone at that point, so. it's a, That's why it's a good idea to let people know. <clears throat> I told Kristen I'd um, merge her back in when she's done, and uh, she acknowledged, and... Um, I asked her if she's done right now or if she's just acknowledging that I said words to her and she understands. <laughs> that was kind of funny. You're like, oh, come on, Rich. You wouldn't want to see Katarina running down the beach with her gyms bouncing up and down like on Baywatch. Like Pamela Anderson. <laughs> hey, if I saw a pretty walk running down the beach like that, yeah, it would look definitely. I'd be like, huh? I think that would take your attention away from the crusty old guys. <laughs> well, yeah, for a moment being, and then I would leave. Yeah, Katarina needed some cheering up, so this was perfect. <clears throat> and she hasn't spoken with Daphne in quite a while either, so that was a good opportunity as well. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Hell, you've spoken with Katarina more recently than Daphne has. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we didn't. We hadn't been that long since me and Katarina got on the line. Yeah, not at it's all. Funny, it, it's funny. It's funny. I started kind of complaining. Man, we haven't seen Katarina in a while, and then Katarina starts popping in, popping in, popping in, popping in, <laughs> popping in, popping in, popping in, popping in. You know, it's like, oh, you want more Katarina, do you? Well, here you go. 
There's plenty of Katarina now. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> you weren't putting up any blocks against it. Uh-huh. And then here she is again. Mm-hmm. It's going to be interesting to see how long this episode is, because I have no fucking idea. Mm-hmm. I haven't eaten all day until now. Mm. I love the 720p copy of the to Mars. This is like an excellent copy. 1080p would probably just be annoying. You'd be able to see their dimples on their face. <clears throat> Ten eighty P HD is cool for some things, but when it comes to like movies, it generally isn't that good. Because then like makeup lines are visible and you know studio. Ten eighty ten eighty P is actually really good for special effects and shit. Like you got a really good space movie or something. It's like Well oh, yeah, for God. that. <laughs> yeah. I bet Mission to Mars wouldn't be too bad in ten eighty P. But seven twenty is perfect. I mean it's just as good really brings the special effects out. Gives them a pop. That movie's an oldie, but a goodie. Uh, not really an oldie. I mean, it's only 15 <laughs> years old. 2000 still pretty recent. Yeah. Barely, but still, it's, you know, we're going to be in 2016 soon. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's hard to believe. I remember when that movie was only four years old. That was when I first watched it. I was eight years old. Man, now you're looking back like, geez, where did time go? <laughs> uh, it was it was good then, and it's still good now. The effects are still excellent. You know, I think they ought to make another Mission to Mars, only make the plot a little different to where, like, everything goes just right. Or the plot goes super well. Or just continue it where they left off, and, and you get to see where that guy goes. <laughs> yeah, I get to see where Gary Sinise ends up. Yeah, and he's like, Oh, cool, you guys gotta come back with me so I can show my friends. And they're like... Oh, well, your mode of travel wasn't warp drive, it was stasis. Fuck! <laughs> They've been long gone. Well, no, if you look at the end of the film, it was what appeared to me to be a warp drive, because he goes, and he shoots off, and it like Yeah, but even if it, but that, it, would, it would still have that effect, even at sublight. Because sublight's still pretty fast. I mean, you're doing more than three quarters of speed of light. You know what I mean? Well, yeah, depending. That's still gonna look like. Phew. I mean, if you you know if you're there just you know casually floating around Mars and this thing goes up and <laughs> you know sublight, you know look at the contrast and speed. So it was fast, it just wasn't necessarily, you know. And plus, the closer you get to the speed of light, time slows down for you, which means it speeds up outside. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, you know, when they say that, like, um... A trip to, you know, Alpha Centauri would take two years at the speed of light or just slightly. That's not how the physics works. It, from your perspective, traveling to Alpha Centauri, it would actually be extremely fast. But because as you approach the speed of light, time slows down for you, it speeds up outside of you. Well, yeah, that's going... So it would be a lot more than two mm -hmm. years going Yeah, by. no, 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 it under temporal, under traditional mechanics and given physics, yes, you're correct, but I guarantee you most alien civilizations have probably figured out what a warp bubble oh, is, yeah, I know. which is what NASA has been already theorizing, and if we've just figured it out, they've already So, you know, the ship probably most likely you could write it in that the ship had a warp bubble and it just went boop, and it just took only like, you know. A minute. Yeah, like 
10 minutes to get there or whatever. Went into slipstream mode and just, you know. It was just maybe that their inertial dampening system, i.e. filling the thing with water, so that way you're just kind of in suspended animation, you know. Yeah. So that way it's not like a go old, you know, mothership, and, you know, you go from going fast to, like, into the wall. <laughs> well, we're here. Man, you need to work on your inertial dampeners. Oh, by the way, that reminds me, on a Stargate SG-1 episode I watched the other day, they did more trolling with the theme song. There was this um, formal, like, reception, you know, dance party or whatever, you know, like the old school type, everyone's, you know, suit and tie and dress and, you know, piano music and everything. And um, there was, like, this classical piano version of the Stargate theme playing in the background. <laughs> so he did it again. It's really subtle. It was an episode I had seen before. The first time I had watched it, I didn't catch it. This time I did. <laughs> And I'm not actually sure how long Kristen's going to take. Oh, who knows? Should we end the episode here or keep it going or what? I mean, I don't have to end the call to end the episode. Yeah, it's up to you, man. I mean, hell, we could, you know, take cut scenes out of the next call and, you know, just continue from there. Because it's all pre-recorded and you can just cut out what doesn't belong and put in what does. Yeah, well, I also want it to be as little work for myself as possible, not creating a lot more. <laughs> well, if you just use Windows Movie Photo... Windows Movie Editor, it'd be much easier. Oh, yeah. Okay, Mr. Flake. Caden Live sucks. Suck. Oh, Kristen wants back in, so apparently we're still going. Talk about the universe answering my question for me there. Okay. Gonna bring her back in. James is a psychopath, James is a con artist, and You're a Rick is a communist hick, hick <laughs> and tater twat. <laughs> Apparently. Yeah, if he ever watches this and he hears me say tater twat. But he wouldn't watch it because only nobody's... Oh, oh yeah, yeah, well he's stalking James, whom he just called a con <laughs> artist. I mean, that guy's a fucking flake, he's just weird. Stalks everybody he dislikes. He hasn't stalked me yet, but who knows, maybe my turn's coming. The mailbox belonging to Kristen okay. is full and cannot accept me. She messaged me on Facebook to bring her back in, but then it's like... Kristen is saying, try again. Ring. Oh, 
is she on? Yeah. There you are. <laughs> hey. Remember, this is still being recorded for public output. Is it being recorded? Yeah, remember earlier when I asked, is it okay for everybody? I recorded PSEC. Yeah, yeah, I didn't know. And didn't everyone's like, up. yes. <laughs> I'm just letting you know it's we're still in it. Would you mind if we ended it? Because mm -hmm. I have something kind of private. It was what I was going to tell you guys earlier. Sure. I don't think our YouTube following. <laughs> so we'll okay. about it, so. Well, not all paradigm shifts must be public, so thank you, everybody, for listening, and, um, you know, yep. catch you all later, and hope this was enjoyable uh, for you all. We we had on, um, you know, Dave Kelso, Time Warrior, myself, um, um, Richard Hamilton, General Tate, Daphne Dugan, Thinking Kristen, known as uh, Kristen Meyer, and Katarina Edwards, Katarina Edwards Roy, Katarina Roy, whatever you want to call her. It was a total freaking party line, man, and we did a lot of facing of shit and having some fun discussions oh. and getting a little little bit dirty in a George Carlin, Bill Hicks sort of way, and yeah, it was all good. So take care and see you next time, and hasta luego, and happy Trash Panda and whatever. So we're out. <laughs>